Have you ever been told you shouldn't travel because you got mobility issues? Well, I have. Hey guys, I'm Maddie and I'm Scott from No Maps Needed Travel. So today's video is a little different and it is a kind of get to know me but also get to know Scott because he's with me <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, it's about mobility issues. So not a lot of people know I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis roughly about four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, four years ago and unfortunately we caught it at the mid to late uh, part of the progression where it's unfortunately deformed my knees to the point where I can't lay uh, put up my knee straight, I'm permanently bent. So with that said is, do I still travel? Yes. Do I still love to travel? Yes. Does Scott still love to travel with me? Yeah, of course I do. Of course he does. But the way that I travel now is with a cane and a mobility scooter. Mm -hmm. So I thought of creating this video and having Scott join me and talking about a couple of tips that we love to, you know, work towards when we travel. And I wanted to communicate those tips with you. So our tips are number one, plan. Plan, 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 plan. I think Scott has been my number one supporter in this because whenever we look at trips, especially cruising, recently is we look at um, cabin categories. We look at how my mobility scooter fits into the doors. And not only that is with airlines, yeah. right? So what we do is we like to plan out. We want to see what is available out there because don't get me wrong, you're, it's great to go to Europe and we've been planning to go to Europe uh, hopefully in the next couple years, you know, with this whole thing that's going on with 2020. A little bit of a damper on that one but is does the streets are like fully flatly like paved or are they cobblestoned or is the hotel have capability with like um a scooter ramp or a mobility ramp and do they have an elevator or is it a boutique is it more of a bed and breakfast is it uh one of those smaller hotels versus a larger hotel so my number one thing would be for sure it would be to plan when it also comes to the planning piece, I mean, it's you have to look into things like planning ahead. So knowing when you're booking your airfare, you have to let them know there's a mobility scooter going on the plane. Are you going to check it at the gate? Um, are you going to, can you know, um, you have to take the battery off of it. There's all kinds of stuff you have to look into. Um, so you have to, you know, contact the airline, figure that out. Um, you, have to, you know, you may have to contact a hotel to figure out their accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, most places in the world nowadays, you won't have a problem, um, but it is some of the older hotels, um, stuff like that, don't have elevators, don't, you know, it's all stairs. So it's things you need to think about um, when you're looking at where you want to stay and how you want to travel. So tip number two, what would you say your tip number two would be, Scotty? So tip number two for me would be, if you haven't done this before, use the travel agent. That is what they are here for. Um, as travel agents, they know the ins and outs of different locations, of how to go about bookings, and um, they're just there to help you. So you don't have to think about it. You know, you can say, I have mobility issues. Here's what I need. Here's what we need to do. And the travel agent's going to take care of it for you. And the best part about it is that Scott and I are actually travel consultants ourselves. And we jumped into this business roughly in the beginning of this year. And it was actually one of the best things that, I mean, that we did minus what's going on right now in the world. But oh, it's our, our tips and our tricks and our, of our planning of, of our travels before we decided like, you know what, let's, let's help individuals like myself yeah. who are confused. And I agree with Scott, like, you're like getting to know your travel agent, your travel consultant, they'll be able to help you. Like I'm going to use this for instance, if I wanted to go to China, which is on a, like part of our bucket list, I wouldn't go visit the great wall because 
a it's not feasible for me to visit the Great Wall. So your travel agent, even though you might not get a, to understand that, your travel agent will help you reiterate to see what other excursions or whatever tours are around the Great Wall where you can actually still experience the aspect of the Great Wall of China, but maybe not be able to actually get yeah. on, get on top of the wall and walk it itself. Um, so tip number three for me is, I'm going to go back to the planning, is going to be YouTube videos. I'm huge on YouTube videos and Scott is as well. We've watched hundreds and thousands yeah. of YouTube videos and that's why we started our YouTube channel ourselves. I mean, it's not because of the mobility issue. It's not about the travel. It's about being able to have a different type of niche that we could provide to the YouTube community. Yeah. So the reason why I say YouTube videos is that like Scott and I are very avid uh, individuals that will watch like YouTubers, but we'll watch what they're doing, but we'll actually watch a little more about the surrounding areas around them. We'll yeah. see if the roads are cobblestone. We'll see if it's paved. We'll see if it has like a little like side rocks, how it's broken off in each section, has the ramp for the scooter to go up. Does the uh, hotel offer um, like accessibility uh, at the front door? Or is it uh, an old boutique style? Or um, like I said, visiting the Great Wall of China. Little harder to do that. But um, yeah, YouTube videos. We absolutely love watching YouTube videos. And it's great to see other people, through, you know, things through other people's eyes. Exactly. Um, but we're also observing maybe what they're not focusing on. So mm -hmm. being able to see like, you know, the background of what's going on in the background, you can see the streets, you can see everything. So um, it's a great way to do your research. Um, and there's some great creators out there who have content. There's lots of content, I'm sure, about um, traveling with mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, mo um, mobility issues and everything else but you know we just want to give our tips and tricks and and, and join them in that exactly next one please so, we have our little list we have our we list apologize. i'm not apologize. just like staring down <laughs> um so the next one we have would be to disclose your needs you don't have to be ashamed or afraid that somebody's going to think of you differently because you are using a you know you know mobility scooter or a cane a walker um a wheelchair whatever it might be um don't be afraid you know it's there's always there's always ways to experience the same stuff you could if you didn't have mobility issues um you just have to find them and figure out what it is and that's the number one thing i'm gonna have to agree with scott is um when i got diagnosed um i was active i ran 5k i worked retail it was on my feet almost like 40 to 50 hours a week um, I, like I said, I ran, I worked out and I think it's adapting to the new lifestyle that you have to think about and don't get me wrong. I had my down days. Oh, Scott would know that I had my down days, but we adapted to it and we adapted yeah. to figure out what did Matthew need? What, what, what niches does Matthew need to achieve to be able to do this? And like, we've traveled to Hawaii. We've been to Alaska twice. Uh, we were in Disneyland, um, LA. Yes. We've yeah. we've done it. So, we've done so much, and we continue to still plan to do a lot. But again, back to the whole planning. what planning <laughs> aspect of it and what's going on throughout the year. I mean, yeah, we've had a lot of our cruises and our and our plans canceled. canceled. But I think what we've adapted with that is that you know we've we've seen other other opportunities. To travel and where i go with that is like i agree don't let it get you down just put a smile on your face if you have loving friends and family that are around you you know what get them to boost you up yeah, yeah. because that's the way to do it and don't let your mobility issues or your thought of being not mobile set you back yeah one thing that isn't on our list that I'm gonna throw out there is um, to give yourself a bit more extra time when you're doing things. Um, we have noticed, especially um, flying, you have to check your scooter at the gate. Yep. It takes a few extra minutes. You know, don't be rushed. Make sure you take advantage of like pre-boarding on a plane um, and just stuff like that. And, and, you know, just take your time and go with the flow. Don't be in a rush. Um, you don't wanna, you know, do something to injure yourself or something, of course. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to 
there's no reason to rush. Just take your time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and tying into that with, with uh, what Scott just said is ask for help. Don't yeah. be afraid to ask for help. If you're traveling by yourself, even if it's a quick destination, right. we live in Vancouver. So if I was flying to Calgary, which is one province over, like, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to ask for help to say, you know what, I, I, I'm a little stiff or I can't walk that mm -hmm. far. Or, you know, can I get like, you know, an extra arm to hold on to, right. to get to my seat. Don't be afraid to ask for help no. because a lot of these individuals like airline stewardess, even your cruise cabin, uh, hotel individuals, bus tour operators, right. train conductors, they're there to help you. And if they're not able to help you, well, you know what? There are some good souls out there that are traveling maybe with you that may be able to able to help you. Yeah. Um, I think my next big one is give yourself some extra time to rest while you're on vacation. <laughs> I believe that it's it's the aspect of go, 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 go is great, but be able to kind of give yourself a day to rest. So if you've noticed that you've been going constantly for two to three days, don't be afraid to say, you know what, this afternoon I'm taking it to myself. I'm either going to the hotel um, hot tub or I'm going to sleep in or I'm just spending the next four hours in the hotel resting, napping, recuperating, because you know what? You understand your body. When your body needs something and is talking to you to say, yo, dude, stop, stop. And that's why I think we love to cruise because we get to go, go, go for a couple of days and then we enjoy our sea days where we can just relax, mm -hmm. we can take it easy. I'll go to the spa, I'll go to the hot tub, have a couple of drinks, and at the end of the day, I'm just relaxed. So if I have another port day the next day, good to go. I'm good to go. Traveling can take a toll on the body, even people without mobility issues. Um, you know, dehydration <clears throat> happens, especially if you're flying. You know, any anything can happen, it takes a toll on the body. Altitude changes can do wonders for you <laughs> i'm joking about that it doesn't do wonders <laughs> but it's especially with somebody with a mobility issue it can affect like maddie could have a flare when we travel so we always have to keep in mind that our plans could change mm -hmm. um you know especially when we're flying somewhere and um we usually do plan that our first day wherever we're if we are flying the first day that we're landing somewhere that we are taking it easy giving maddie time to rest because um it can affect inflammation in the body and it can cause a lot of pain for him so we always take that into account and if we don't you always want to have a backup plan so if you have plans made yes. make sure that you know sometimes things don't go the way you want and be prepared for that to change so you know we we've, we've gone places where it's like okay we plan on doing this excursion say on a cruise but it's like maddie's not feeling well so you know you cancel the excursion and do something else. Um, find something that's easier to do or different time frame, whatever it might be. Um, we're still going to take advantage of wherever we are and what we're seeing, but we have, we always have a, you know, if something happens, here's what we're going to do instead. And that's exactly it. It's that what if, like yeah. what if this were to happen? What if this were to happen? What if that were to happen? And it kind of really ties in back to your travel agent. So if you're booking with your travel agent and you have something come up where you maybe get to your hotel and they're doing massive renovations in the lobby and they've removed um, the handicapped accessibility uh, like I ramp. That would happen. But... Like, well, hopefully <laughs> that wouldn't happen. But scenarios like that yeah. is that if you can't handle it, pick up the phone and call your travel agent. Your travel agent will be able to support you in any other way that's possibly that they can on their end while you're on vacation. Um, I think the last one I would say, and Scott would agree, is enjoy your time. Just enjoy it. Um, there has been times where I've traveled and I get the side eye and I'm like, well, why is that guy so young on a mobility scooter? And my philosophy has always been, you don't know my story. My story is my story. My story is my husband's story. And at the end of the day, that's really it. So it's our story. So don't let other people, like, you know, scenarios or moods let you down enjoy it enjoy every single moment of it you've spent either a dollar to a hundred thousand dollars that's a pretty big trip but <laughs> you either you've spent your hard-earned cash to be able to go on vacation so enjoy every single moment of it because you know what it's you only live once and at the end of the day seize the day seize the day 
I think the most important thing to remember is even if you have a mobility issue, you can still travel and do everything that you used to do. It's just in a different way. Yep. And you just have to, you know, think differently, maybe book it differently. Yep. Maybe there's a different way you need to travel. Maybe there's, you know, different excursions you need to do, whatever it might be, but you can still do it. Um, and we've done it for what, four years now. Four years now. Um, yep. And it gets easier and easier the more you do it. And that's the um, number one thing, yeah. And now it's just become almost second nature. We don't even think about it. No, we don't. But, um, you know, it's life life goes on yeah. and you still get to enjoy it so make sure you take that time still go out and enjoy it don't care what people think nope. they're gonna look and judge who cares who cares you're there to enjoy your vacation amen 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 so again i'm maddie and i'm scott and we're from no maps needed travel and let the adventure guide you no maps needed thanks for watching you guys take care